In this presentation, we're going to talk about penicillulitis and perichondritis. Penicillulitis usually uh, happens as a result of otitis externa spreading to around the external ear canal to the uh, penna. This can also happen due to infections after skin bites or skin conditions such as eczema or psoriasis. However, penna perichondritis usually happen after penetrating trauma to the ear. And of course, the most common example for that is uh, earrings. The main difference is that penna cellulitis, because it's the skin that's infected of the penna in general, you will see the uh, lobule of the ear involved. However, in penna perichondritis, it's an infection of the skin that is uh, overlying the cartilage of the external ear, and therefore, most commonly, it will spare the lobule. The causative organisms uh, that cause these two presentations are different as well. You will see that uh, perichondritis, uh, you will see sodomonas uh, more commonly, while in uh, penicillulitis, it is usually Staphylococcus aureus. In the picture on the right side, you'll see the typical lobule sparing uh, infection. This is clearly uh, surrounded the area of the cartilage of the pinna, and this is uh, perichondritis. While on the left, you'll see uh, clearly discharge from the external ear, and the otitis externa that's leading to this discharge has been complicated with infection of the surrounding skin of the external ear canal, and the skin of the penna has been inflamed, and you'll see that it is swollen, and the penna is red and inflamed. So what do we need to do as SHOs when we are referred patients with perichondritis or penna cellulitis? Well, first of all, we uh, obviously need to take a good history and perform a thorough physical examination. Uh, please document any comorbidities patients with uh, um, immunocompromised compromising conditions can have severe infection if they are diabetic they can have uh, 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 harder infections to treat also you need to examine both ears even if the infection is only in, in, in the right or the left always examine both ears and always document if there is a perforation in the tympanic membrane and um, if there is a perforation, usually we would describe that in terms of percentages and the location in terms of anterior, superior, uh, inferior, and posterior. If the mastoids are tender, then this can also be a sign of a more severe infection. You will need to examine the lymph nodes in the neck and periorecularly. Uh, you will also need to perform a full facial nerve examination if the facial nerve is involved, then this is a sign of a severe infection that is spreading and uh, the facial nerve is now involved. Please uh, inform your senior, the registrar, if uh, you suspect that the facial nerve is um, involved in any ear conditions. A good thing to do is to mark the infection area. This is to monitor whether the infection is spreading or is confined to a certain location. and. Uh, to see if our treatment and management is uh, is working. Uh, please document if there's any hearing loss. It is useful to send the patient for a hearing test if you suspect uh, that the hearing uh, is reduced. So what are the red flags of perichondritis and penicillulitis? If an abscess is present, then uh, the abscess needs to be drained. And this is a red flag because the uh, infection is uh, severe enough to cause an abscess, and you, we, we will need to discuss that with the registrar. If you find any areas that are uh, necrosed, then the patient might need uh, to have a debridement theater or under local anesthesia, and this needs to be discussed with the senior as well. If the infection is severe enough to make the patient unwell, uh, this is a red flag if the patient has uh, signs of altered mental status, if uh, uh, the uh, patient uh, is confused or delirious, then the infection is severe and we also need to speak with the registrar 
uh, and as we discussed earlier, if the patient have facial nerve palsy or, or other cranial nerve palsies, then we need to discuss it with our seniors. Please also discuss with the registrar if the patient had a previously uh, failed treatment, as we need to uh, start more aggressive treatment options. Uh, as we discussed in the previous slide, if the patient has any red flags, then uh, please speak with the registrar. For most patients with penna cellulitis or perichondritis, treatment is with a combination of topical and systemic antibiotics. We uh, need to take a swab if there are uh, signs of inflammation in the penna or ear canal. This is done for culture and sensitivity. We also need to take swabs uh, for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus as this will uh, change in our management. Please uh, keep the patient nail by mouth if you suspect that the patient needs to go to theater. Uh, the uh, presence of an abscess or necrosis of the penna or ear canal uh, might mean that the patient will need to go for drainage of the abscess or debridement uh, in the area of necrosis and they would require uh, an operation in theater and the patient needs to be in by mouth uh, for that to happen uh, in the morning after ward round review. If you uh, think that the patient has a severe infection and uh, the patient looks unwell, then uh, IV antibiotics uh, might be appropriate. If the patient uh, needs drainage for an abscess or uh, debridement, then IV antibiotics are also appropriate. If the patient uh, looks well and can eat and drink, and if the patient has uh, an infection that is not uh, very severe, then uh, oral antibiotic might be more appropriate. For most patients, we would need uh, blood investigations, including a full blood count, a C-reactive protein, a coagulation screen, especially if they uh, need to go to theater, and urea and electrolytes. If the patient uh, seems sep septic, then uh, of course we need to do the sepsis 6, which include blood cultures. And if the patient still has any piercings in the uh, ear, please remove them as they can uh, be the source of the entire infection.